Welcome to an episode of Brown Girls Are Beautiful. I'm your melanated queen and your hostess, Lil Foxy, aka Seven Wonder. You can also call me Shawnee. Um, I am happy to be able to address you all if you're not aware, if you're not familiar. My channel was stricken twice by YouTube for talking about the CVID vaccine. I guess they didn't like something that I said and they went back and found a prior video of mine that I had posted about two or three weeks ago, you all. And I was putting the video on private actually. And I guess that triggered something in the system. It was the video that um it, it was called golden queen and i had on like my gold queen tank top and i had on like a gold flannel shirt on top of it i was standing outside and i was just talking about the brand and then i started talking about the cvid and the vaccine vaccine if you all want to see that video i am going to make sure you get a chance to watch that video there was a second video of mine prior to this one that got stricken as well and if you want to see that video i will make sure you see that video as well because i have both of them saved i save all my content i make sure that i have a backup file of everything that i do you all so that information is still available and i'll find a way to um get that out to you okay so it's not lost it's still here but with all of that being said, I hope you all are having a wonderful week. I hope you are having a good September. We are approaching fall, you all. And as you know, Brown Girls Are Beautiful has hoodies for the fall. Brown Girls Are Beautiful has a hoodie shirt dresses for the fall. Um, I'm not wearing anything like that today. Today, I actually had an open house. I do real estate, you all, as well. And tomorrow, I will be busy with clients and we'll be hosting an open house as well. So, um, since we're talking about that, Brown Girls Are Beautiful just wants to get into um, what it's like to be um, steadfast in your financial future, you all. And so I want to talk and touch on that a little bit because even though this is not my real estate channel, I still want to come on and talk about it because I've had people to ask me questions that I feel they should have the answers to, especially within the melanated community, you all. So I'm bringing this information to you, not as a realtor, but as the founder, the CEO and owner of Brown Girls Are Beautiful, okay? Because I have to be real careful how I uh, present information to you all. So I have had people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s tell me that they are scared or basically pose the question to me that they don't know if they should be homeowners, you all. And what I will always tell you is I am going to say home ownership versus renting is the way to go. The reason that I'm saying that is not to benefit myself as a realtor, but to benefit you for your financial future. And I think that's something that a lot of people do not grasp um, early in, enough in life. You all, if you're 18, 19, 20, 21, I understand that people like to move out. They want to be on their own. They want to rent. But I would say to you, make sure that you're making smart financial decisions. And I think these discussions are not taught enough in melanated communities and melanated families. This is why they are so poverty stricken because they are unfortunately not responsible with finances and financial resources. You all, it's not about trying to buy the latest clothing brand or the best car or the biggest house or all these expensive things when you're that young. What you really want to do is secure your financial future. And what I would say is if you're renting, then you more than likely can pay a mortgage because you're already paying a mortgage, mortgage you're just paying someone else's mortgage. A lot of times, uh, what you pay in mortgage, I'm sorry, what you pay in rent, you can actually pay that in mortgage. Uh, people are scared because they feel that they are tied to a financial contract and a financial agreement, you all. This sense of logic does not even make sense. This way of thinking to me is not logical because if you sign a lease, do you not understand that that's a contractual agreement? If you sign a lease and you get behind in your rent, 
by one month they are ready to take you to court most of the time you have to worry about court costs and plus paying the rent and any late fees when you are in a house they will work with you to stay in your house not only can you go behind in your payments you can be put on what's called a forbearance program especially since covid has hit so they're helping people stay in their homes because it costs the bank more money to actually try to get you out of your house than for you to stay in your house and pay the mortgage payment what is forbearance Forbearance is when they basically you forego your payments for a certain amount of time until you can start paying your payments again. So hopefully this doesn't negatively impact the credit report because you would speak to your um, financial. Well, you would speak to your mortgage company and you would let them know what's going on with you financially. Once you're put on fair forbearance or deferment, it's almost like a student loan. They do not require payments, you all. And so they stop late fees so it does not hit you. And then when you're able to pick up these payments again, you can start paying. What I would strongly advise you to do if you're going to do this, if you come across some money and you actually are able to pay that money on your mortgage, even if you have to set it aside, set that money aside and pay that mortgage or pay that mortgage once your uh, forbearance is up because at the end of it, they're going to want that money up front and you don't want to mess up any agreement that you've had with your um with your mortgage company you all another misconception that people have is that they cannot refinance because it starts their payments all over again i don't know where this comes from but this is another misinformed um, theory in the melanated community you all i tried to explain this a long time ago to one of my friends she had a chevrolet suburban um and she was paying about five or six hundred dollars almost in a truck payment plus insurance living at home and had filed bankruptcy twice and was working two jobs for most of her working years so this tells you how uninformed and how uneducated melanated beings are when it comes to finances you all now i did try to tell her that she could have gotten a townhouse then she started saying it would not be advantageous to purchase because then she started worrying about repairs and the fact that when you lease an apartment you don't have to worry about maintenance you all but people are not understanding what they're doing with their financial resources I tried to explain to this individual and I'm explaining to you all as well that when you refinance a car when you refinance a house you are not starting payments all over again what you're doing is lowering your payments and you're lowering the interest that they're charging you to borrow that loan so if you have a car and your car payments are $400 a month and you wish to refinance the, that car loan your payments are going to drop I don't know how much it is it depends on your credit score and the interest rate that you get but you can lower your payments and you will be paying about $320 instead of $400 a month for the same car this means your interest rate is lower that means your payments are lower so if you were paying $400 and your payments drop down to 320 then that means you can now take that extra $80 and put it in savings or pay off a bill or put that extra $80 on the car payment and pay your loan off sooner which helps your credit score and your credit report you all same thing with the house when you get a house people are so scared about the house note or the house payment but guess what when you go into the house and you're scared about the payment don't be too nervous because after you have consistently made your payments for a year you can refinance you all their banks are willing to work with you your lender your the loan company is willing to work with you to lower your payments as long as you have been on your job or you have had consistent income for two years you can refinance and all they do is they do the same thing as when you get the house they want to look at the um financial records they want to look at probably some paycheck stubs it's very it's a very seamless easy process you all and that helps saves you you can save a couple of hundred dollars off of your house payment literally 
okay so don't be afraid to purchase is what i'm telling you it is more advantageous to purchase than to keep renting and that's why a lot of melanated people don't acquire any type of wealth any type of generational wealth any type of financial resources because they don't have real estate they're not purchasing land they are putting their resources into things that are not going to elevate in value or you know they're putting their money into things that are going to depreciate uh, Jordans tennis shoes are not going to appreciate hair weave is not going to appreciate all of these things that you buy that you feel is name brand that you need to prove that's of the European uh, concept is really not helping you build your generational wealth for your children and your future another thing that I would like to talk about is life insurance there are so many people that are dying right now and it is very scary during these times especially with COVID going on um, people really need to look into getting um, life insurance policies for themselves and for their family members you all this is how the other cultures are able to generate wealth as well now we don't want to think about these things we don't want to talk about these things because we don't want to have to deal with it but it is far worse to have someone in your family transition and you don't have the funds to pay for burial or for a funeral or whatever arrangements you don't have the money and now you're scrounging now you have done what now you're trying to do a gofundme that gofundme is not for burial expenses gofundme is not for funeral expenses when melanated people have so many financial resources to spend in jordans to spend in all these little things that matter that does not matter you're going out here and you're buying electronic devices for your kids you're going out here and you're buying all these electronics all these games all these jordans all this hair weave cars it's just stuff that does not appreciate and value but you don't even have life insurance so if something happens to yourself a relative a family member your children can be taken care of people are not doing that you don't understand that life insurance policies you can get one for fifty dollars a month 50 50 50 you can get three people for 150 dollars a month with a life insurance policy they melanated people look at it like they don't have the money for that they're not spending 150 dollars on life insurance because why it is not a tangible item and so they feel that they will forgo a life insurance policy and just worry about it when it comes this is why people don't have the money to even bury their own family and then everyone looks to one particular relative and the family to try to come up with the most resources how fair is that because people have been financially lazy and they don't want to make the sacrifices to do what they need to do to be responsible for their future another thing that melanated people need to recognize is it is important to have what's called mortgage insurance mortgage insurance covers your mortgage you all if something is to happen to yourself or your relative or whomever is uh has the house in their name or who, whomever is paying on the mortgage so if they are the sole provider of the household and they lose their job well not if they lose their job if they lose their life and they transition and you're living in that home well what if you can't make the payments mortgage insurance pays the mortgage off so that the state does not come in as cheat meaning they don't come and take over your property because you can no longer pay it get your estate and your affairs in order you want to get a will and you need to put it on record and you need to make your relatives and your family members and whomever aware of what you're doing this is why a lot of people have life insurance policies and money that is floating out there and they know nothing about it and they could have been paid by now but because family members don't talk about these things and they keep everything a secret which i don't understand this makes no sense then you have basically made a life insurance policy and put it in a secret place nobody knows about it so when something happens to you nobody has access to the funds and this has happened time and time again and so this stuff needs to stop because it's foolishness you all there's no reason why melanated people should be in the state that they put themselves in 
those are the things that I really wanted to talk about because um, I have been asked the question that because you know I'm 40 I'm 50 I'm 60 I'm almost 70 should I purchase a house I'm always going to say yes even though this is a seller's market right now and everybody's saying the market is going to fluctuate I'm just going to hold out and wait well guess what you can hold out and wait but guess what's going to happen that same house that you could have moved in especially if you're trying to get into a brand new neighborhood you're going to pay approximately thirty thousand dollars more if you wait another year to get into that neighborhood because the cost of houses is going up and those people that have moved in earlier they're going to have at least 20 to 30 to 40 thousand dollars of worth of equity in their homes by the time you move in and so what I want to say to you is you will not find a job with a 401k that you can stay in a house or a job for two years of your life and earn 20 to 30 to $40,000 in value. There's no 401k paying that much for you being on your job for two years. That's what the benefits are when you move into a house, when you acquire real estate, you all. It is common sense. Once you're in your house for about two years, do you know that you can sell it? And that equity that is in your house, you actually, uh, um, you actually receive the equity in your house. That is, you don't have to worry about the taxes, but if you move prior to being in your house for two years, you have to worry about the taxes on that house. The, these are the benefits of having home ownership, you all. When you get into a rental property and you move out after two years, more than likely they're going to try to charge you a bill because they're going to say you damaged the property or they're going to try to say that you owe for carpet or they're going to try to say that you damaged the walls. Or they're going to try to find a way to keep your deposit. Okay? It makes no logical sense to rent for year after year after 20 years of renting and you've thrown your money away and you get none of it back. 20 years of purchasing or living in a home and guess what? You're acquiring equity in that house. You're acquiring value in that house. You have resources because guess what? If you ever wanted to do a line of equity and you really needed money for medical emergencies, you can do that. And if you ever wanted to rent your house, guess what? You're still making money off of that house because more than likely you're going to rent it for more than what your mortgage is. And you're going to have a couple of hundred dollars extra every single month coming into you residual income. That's what you can do when you have a house. Are you renting out your apartment? A lot of places don't allow subleases. Do you know how hard it is to lease out an apartment to allow to allow someone to stay in an apartment without the rental company finding out because they like to keep coming in and out of your uh, rental property? They do that because they're checking things. They want to see who you have living in that property. Another thing, like I said, you sell your house once you've been in there for a couple of years. You can't sell your apartment after a couple of years. When you move out, what are you getting? A bill more than likely and your little deposit money that you put down. So you all, it does take uh, a little bit of effort to get a house, but what does that take? Two years of stability of income. Two years and in stable income is what it takes. A credit score of at least some people can get into a house with a 585. Now your, your interest rate is going to be high, but guess what? Credit fluctuates, it goes up and down. And like I just told you, you can always refinance. So that means while you're in the house making these payments consistently for one year, you're working on your credit. You're finding other ways to acquire income and you're paying off bills and debt. So that when you go to refinance, guess what? That means that you're gonna get a lower APR. Uh, I'm sorry, you're gonna get a lower interest rate and you're going to get um, a couple of hundred dollars off your house payment, you all. PMI and what it's called um, property interests and taxes, okay? And private mortgage insurance. All these things people need to be aware of because if you're not aware of it, you're gonna be stuck in the um, residual cycle of having nothing and having no type of financial resources to pass on to your children, you all. This is why Brown Girls Are Beautiful is on here speaking about it because I see it's no reason that a lot of our melanated people fall victim and prey to not having uh, financial freedom and, and financial, um, just a better financial future for themselves and for their children. 
also building a business and carrying on a legacy and having something to leave your kids instead of leaving and transitioning and leaving your children debt I don't think that's fair and um, I think it's important that melanated people also take care of themselves because it's not fair to your children that when they get in their 30s and 40s that you have to be taken care of because you negated to take care of yourself. Excuse me, you did not want to eat right. You did not want to uh, stop doing the things that you shouldn't have been doing. You didn't want to exercise. You didn't love yourself enough. So now you want your children to have to go to work or have to raise their kids and then still take care of you. Do you understand the strain? All of these nonsense antics puts on the melanated family and the melanated community. They already have resources that are kept away from them. I mean, there is very much so something that is called um, socioeconomic uh, discrimination. And when you know that, and when you know better, you're supposed to do better, you all. So Brown Girls Are Beautiful just wanted to come on and talk about that. I'm going to switch the topic now. And um, I did have one of my, one of my, um, one of my clients, I'm sorry, one of my clients and subscribers wrote in, her name is Sharice. Thank you so much for writing in Sharice. Shout out to you. And she asked me, um, how do I go about expanding my brand? And what I would say is, um, if you're building a brand, you want to make sure that your brand stands beside or uh, is a representation of what you believe. Brown Girls Are Beautiful, the title speaks for itself. I came up with that title because I felt that I wanted to empower the melanated female. Um, I believe that Brown Girls Are Beautiful exemplifies inner beauty. Um, Brown Girls Are Beautiful sets the precedence and the example that you can be educated, you can be well spoken and articulate, and you don't have to be silenced. You don't have to downplay your intellect. You don't have to downplay the fact that you respect yourself, that you're a woman of character and of value, and that um, basically you can be who you are and you embrace your inner beauty and you embrace your outer beauty. I feel that a lot of times we feel like we have to downplay ourselves so other people can feel better, but never dim your light. Always shine because if someone can't stand beside you and shine along with you, then they don't need to be standing beside you. So Brown Girls Are Beautiful, the way that I expand the brand is by networking with other like-minded individuals, networking with people that believe in the same values that I believe in, and networking with people that I feel that I have good energy and chemistry with you all. Brown Girls Are Beautiful also expands by um, expounding upon the creative endeavors in which I wish to pursue, things that I, am, I have an interest in. You all know that I am very um, big on advocating for brown girls we have our golden glowers we have our bronze beauties we have our caramel cuties you know we have our sun kissed glowers we, we're just beautiful all the way around and i think that one thing that brown girls are beautiful exemplifies is just embracing your your natural beauty embracing how you were born if you're petite you know if you are medium built if you're more heavy set you know all of us has a certain type of genetic DNA and the way that you're built and the way that you have been sitting here for, from the divine creators is how you were meant to be. And I don't think we need to reconstruct, okay, what was meant to be for us. So I don't think that you need to come and get plastic surgery on your body. I don't think you need to come in and wear hair weave to impress melanated men. I don't think you need to come in and have anything fake if you don't want it on your body to impress the likes of a guy because if he really cares about you that is not what's going to keep them in the first place because there can be any female that can go and build a body and get you know weave and get lashes and get pounds of makeup and make herself up but if she does not exemplify and exude that love from within and have that charismatic energy that thrives within and have that passion and love for herself within all of the things that she puts on the outside is just that. It's just decoration on the cake. But when you go and try to bite that cake, what if it tastes nasty, you all? So that's how I look at things. I look at things from the inward outward, 
from the out from inside to the outward that's what you want to work on and once you start uh radiating in inward it's going to exuberate outwardly you all that's what brown girls are beautiful is about it's about uh, exemplifying all of these things that I speak about knowing that um, you have the, your inner beauty you have your outer beauty and you you can embrace the beauty of other like-minded women and other females um, there's so much jealousy that goes on in the melanated community I've been through so much of that in my lifetime that's going to be in my autobiography you all and I see it also happening with the guys in the melanated community and I think that really we need to stop because we can't afford for these silly antics to keep taking place with all of these little arrogant shenanigans these little in egotistical behaviors that we see play out amongst the melanated community you all so with all of that being said how brown brown girls are beautiful expand expounds upon the brand is basically like i said taking interest in what i feel is important to myself and as the brand as a whole and that means this this uh being responsible and how I um, showcase the, the brand. I, I developed a platform for Brown Girls Are Beautiful on, you know, of course on this channel, but also on social media as well. So that's expanding the brand in its own way, but it's also basically exemplifying what I wish to portray for Brown Girls Are Beautiful. And uh, basically making my brand stand for something that in which that I believe that I feel that others can migrate to so like we always want to say we celebrate our melanated queens we celebrate our melanated kings we celebrate our princes and princesses and we walk in our divinity over here brown girls are beautiful does not like to play in silly antics and we don't have time for the little silly reindeer games you all Brown Girls Are Beautiful is, um, you know, she's a, she's that type of female that she walks in her queen status. She walks in her divinity, you all. Brown, the brown girl that's beautiful knows that she's beautiful and um, she's not afraid to show her beauty and let it resonate outwardly, you all. That is how we expand our brand over here and we welcome those that would love to have us and we walk and we uh, surround ourselves with people who have positive uh, like minds and who exudes positivity that we love to share. So I would say that those are the ways in which um, I expand up expound upon the brand. Um, you know, I'm always thinking of ways that I can continue to expand um i'm always thinking of other ventures that i can take on and a lot of times people will say you only need to focus on one thing at one time but when you're multifaceted it is hard to do that because i take a lot of interest in a lot of different things you all and i've been this way for a long time and when you start walking into your divinity um, it's kind of hard to stop doing the things in which you were designed to do because that's why you were sent here to do those things. So, so Sharice, thank you so much for writing into BGAB. Um, you all, I will start to do drawings and contests so I can send you things um, from the Brown Girls of Beautiful brand. And, um, you know, I just love being creative. I love making designs for the brand. I love trying new things. I do have a new logo that Brown Girls Are Beautiful um, is starting to print. And I think you all are going to love it. If you've seen my other channel, then you've seen the brand and you've seen the logo. It is, it is quite... Um, unique and I, I like it um, it's refreshing and it's a little bit more sophisticated um, very mature but I like both of my logos and that's one thing about me I'm, I'm not afraid to try different things and you know I'm always open to constructive criticism as well and I think that's that's very important it's not to um, be insulted when someone is just trying to help direct you to help you grow so brown girls are beautiful is very open to feedback you know from clientele from customers and from all supporters and i just wanted to say thank you so much you know for your patience with me